Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today I've got a very special one for you. A early alpha version of a game called Aporia, or Aporia, I'm not sure which. It is supposed to be sort of like an interactive mystery first person exploration type game and it's done in freaking CryEngine 3 so it's going to be beautiful. Uh, but I have to warn you it's really early on so there might be a bit of stuttering, the frame rate, frame rate might not be perfect, uh, things just might not be, you know, exactly done yet. But that's okay, I mean, that's what you expect out of an alpha version of a game, and hopefully you guys are all on the same page with that. So, uh, let's read this thing real quick here. So, uh, Aporia is an interactive experience with many secrets where nothing is there by chance. In order to gain the maximum experience out of Aporia, you will need to be observant, sharp, and explorative. I'm all those things, absolutely. You control with mouse and keyboard, WASD, uh, for movement, space for jumping, shift for sprinting, F for interacting, and hold I to see your inventory. We hope you'll enjoy Aporia and spend five minutes on a questionnaire after the experience. Alright, so, um, that all seems fine. I'm totally good with that. Uh, sounds like a pretty cool thing, and, uh, I will warn you guys if you do want to go check this one out, uh, you have to register for a couple things. It's not exactly, like, an instant download. Uh, you have to register for, like, the, the SDK for this and then get an account with them. Uh, it, it takes a few minutes. It's not a big deal or anything. If you want to do it, no problem, but just, like, it, be aware it'll take you, like, five or ten minutes before you're in the game. Uh, not to mention the file itself is over a gigabyte. I think it's, like, 1.3 gigs, uh, for the compressed version. Then you gotta sit and decompress the whole thing. So we're, we're floating at the bottom of what looks like an ocean or a lake or some sort of body of water. I'm sure you're pretty eager to see what's above. I want to give it ample time to load in before I, I tackle the visuals. Oh man, I see a lighthouse. Dear Esther, today is another day. Okay, so let's float in a little bit. Looks like we've got some pretty heavy rain. Possibly a little bit of lightning? No, that's just water. Alright, I want to get in off of this nasty water situation. Wow, it looks really nice. Give it a moment to load. Uh, there's a lovely motion blur effect that happens when you move around. Seems pretty cool. Some nice reflections. Got a few lanterns, and of course, since we know nothing is here by accident, those are very important. These rocks, I'm sure, are no accident either. Uh, so I should probably analyze the positions of these sticks, because they probably will tell me something about my future. It's like reading the uh, tea leaves at the bottom of a cup. No, I'm just messing with you. Um, so, what should I say about Aporia? I just stumbled on this one by accident. I was looking around in a uh, mod database. Can I interact with this? And it's not too often that I come across, well, anything done in CryEngine, so I figured that alone might be worth looking at. Just to see what they do with these assets and, and how to uh, proceed with that. And once I found out it was an yeah, exploratory heavy type game, you know, I was pretty much sold at that point. Things are coming into view. So apparently it's a very, very large landscape that we can traverse. And uh, I'm not going to say that it looks as phenomenal as I was maybe expecting, but again, early alpha, and it is it is fine. No, no complaints yet. Um, and again, sorry for the loading when I turn too quickly. Uh, the README said that this is like a skeletal framework of the narrative that the full game will contain. So I'm not sure what to expect out of this yet. But it should be interesting. Uh, well, I mean, I figure the... As usual, the guiding beacon is going to be this lighthouse, so we're headed sort of in that direction for now. I do want to get a sort of a grasp on, like, higher ground, see what we can find as far as distance. Oh, that's a strange thing to see on the ground. What is that? Is this a placeholder? <laughs> it's supposed to be like a map on the ground or something? I don't know what this is. Kind of silly though. Can I hit F on it? No. What's my inventory look like? I have nothing in my inventory. Okay. Got a camera on the ground or on this rock here. Picked up photo one. This is Alexander Hamilton's grave. Is this a grave, or is this just a monument? It's probably a monument, because they probably didn't bury him in two pieces, unless he got cut in half. I don't know, maybe it's that kind of world, we don't know. 
We could we could find out there's some nasty uh, things lurking around in the darkness. I thought it was kind of cool that nobody online that I've really noticed has covered this yet, so I th think this may be one of the first videos. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody that's covered it, but I, I didn't run into it at a, a very casual glance, and I didn't even, like, search YouTube, so there's probably a bunch on there. But I'm just saying, I haven't seen it pop up on Reddit or anything. Please, be easy on me. I, I speak before I think sometimes. <laughs> um, so clearly the lighthouse is saying, go here. I mean, it, it couldn't be much more obvious than that. What is that about? Is that... Oh, waves up on the edge of... a rocky precipice... area? Well, I do as I'm told. Let's head over there. It's definitely a pretty big landscape. I'll give them that, sure. And there's some uh, icy mountains over there in the distance that I believe we can go to. Because I think I saw a screenshot with some icy mountains. What am I... Why am I stuck on this edge? Are we getting funneled down? I think we are. I can't seem to walk over there anymore. I don't really like that. I don't even know if I can get back out on the other side if I want to go through there. Uh, and I'm gonna need to. Alright, well, let's give it a shot. I always like to check waterfalls anyway. Uh, having played my fair share of Zelda games... I'd say, what is it, like, one in six waterfalls have something hidden behind them? I wish real life was more like that. Also, what's up with the fact that you can just exist on the bottom of the ground, or uh, under the water, and... I don't seem to have any problem with that. Or is that, uh, just not yet implemented? Like, no oxygen bar? Because I'm pretty sure there was an oxygen bar in Crisis. Uh, so it would probably be part of the engine, uh, but yeah, it doesn't seem to exist yet, so either it's not implemented or your character, for some reason, doesn't need to breathe, which uh, may be inserting more narrative than the developers were prepared to at the time of them releasing this build. So, I seem to be stuck in the water now, I'm not too happy about that, maybe this is just too steep, let's head on down. I think this texture could use a little bit of scaling, it's uh, tiled pretty hard. And we do have these little bits of rock, though, so those are always good. I imagine these come in, like, brush sets. You can just pop down some random rock bits wherever you feel is necessary. Um, I don't know about this fog. I mean, I guess it's probably there just to hide, like, level of distance so we don't end up getting too bad uh, drawing, since this is a very large open landscape, but at the same time, the fog seems a little heavy-handed. Then again, if it's saving my frame rate from being zero, I will gladly take it for now. Alright, well, if I've learned anything from playing Fallout 3 and its uh, little brother, New Vegas, I, I use that term very generally, um, I I've learned not to run around too much on rocks with jagged faces because you can get stuck in them and never leave. And I don't like when that happens. So clearly I'm not meant to go that way. I've learned my lesson. Let us follow a path, shall we? Nothing I like more in my open world exploration games than following paths. Uh, worked for Skyrim, right? Well, this is interesting. What are we playing, Alan Wake all of a sudden? Nothing is put here by accident. Let's be observant and notice that these shards of wood uh, contain a ladder and what looks like possibly... Uh, I was gonna say burned, but no, it actually looks more like rusty metal. Really liking this music, too. Uh, is that a old fire pit, or is that a hole? I can't really tell. That's the only problem with stuff like this, you know? If you're gonna be really specific about your placement of everything, like, the textures can't be ambiguous at all. And I'm not saying they necessarily are, but just I can't personally tell if that was a hole or not. Is that blood on there? See, this happens again. I'd like a flashlight. Looks kind of like blood to me. I'm guessing I can jump up this. Whoa. What the? Alright, that actually kind of scared me. <laughs> Why? Why did that just happen? Is that... how sun works now? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Now I've done it. 
Okay, well, we're back. Uh, looks like I probably shouldn't have walked on that surface, and I've learned my lesson, and I'm very sorry. I will never do that again. Uh, thankfully, I guess I found the right key to reload myself without having to quit the game and launch it again, because now I have the added benefit of not having it be super ultra choppy. Uh, seems like it's loaded in enough textures now, so the frame rate seems substantially smoother than when we first started. Uh, it did warn that in the readme, though, so I'm not, you know, offended or bothered by that. It's not a big deal. So here I go again, trying to jump over all of the things in my way. I just feel like, you know, open world exploration means I should probably be able to jump over some stuff, but they really did want to keep me out of those areas. So, see there? Right there. Rock going through the fence. Still can't jump over it. Oh crap, and now I'm going to get stuck between all these rocks. What is the matter with me? Why do I keep doing this? Let's just, uh, not try and break the rules for once in my freaking life. Alright, run. Shift. Doesn't help me jump any further, unfortunately, or I would've used that to get out of being stuck in that roof. Alright, let's actually make some progress. I want to see what happens as we get further into this map to areas that we were intended to go for once. Alright, is that... okay, path. Following, following, following. Must not deviate from path or we'll get stuck. It's strange, like, it's an, it's a cool, kind of almost beautiful looking landscape, but then parts of it just look sort of too copy-paste. And again, I know this is an alpha, so I'm not really criticizing too much. <clears throat> and it also might be my, my computer's not running it maybe at the highest settings. Uh, I'm running this for, you know, 720p for YouTube. And I could probably crank it up quite a bit more. There may be much better stuff to see than that. But I'm just saying as it stands. Alright, so here we are. We can press F and cycle through pictures. I'm not sure if that exactly looks like what that projector would look like, but okay. Pressing F. Oh. Alright, so we've got... Oh, I don't want to get in the way of the projector, right? See, it's supposed to actually block the image from being projected, but that's okay. Can't ask for everything. So we've got a crystal up here, which we're going to exchange with that circular crystal, which may also laterally be exchanged with these uh, elongated vertical crystals. Uh, you may need to mine these vertical crystals, which seem to be extruded from the back of a porcupine, and all of it's a mystery, really. So keep that in mind. Crystals. Cycle. Cycling. Cycle? You do not do that. Okay, I guess... Oh, now it works. Okay, there's like 20 of the same picture and then one that's not the same. That's the way that works. And then over here we've got another silly goofy map. <clears throat> so I guess that's giving us a quick view of where to go. Um, shot in the dark here, but I'm gonna guess maybe that house is where we're at. And then we've got one, two, three, and four down on the bottom. I would think those are maybe spawn points, and it's just showing me how to get back. This can't be the only thing there is to see. Certainly not. I would like to take all of you. Uh, I will get absolutely nothing for my efforts, though. And we're out. Nothing else to see here. So we're going to go mine some crystals, I guess. At least that's what the projector told me. Would have been nice if I could have taken something to do that with. Oh, those are not crystals at all, are they? really thought they were. They're actually just white glowing grass. Okay. Well, these look like crystals, I guess. <clears throat> is it an anomaly from uh, Stalker? What is this thing? Glowing plasma ball? I got it! I got the blue orb. Now I just need the red key card and everything will be good. I'm going to just <clears throat> follow the crystals and my nose, wherever it goes. This thing is bright red, so clearly it must be important. 
I remember from Mirror's Edge. That is really, really red. Why would anything be that red? It's another camera. Apparently, cameras hold one photo in them. Alright, more crystals over there. That's clearly the next focal point. I'm like, I'm kind of ambivalent on the mystery element right now. I'm not really sure I'm buying it yet. I'm intrigued by crystals and blue orbs. Those are things that always capture my attention. Um, I still don't think those are crystals, though. These, these I'll give you. They, they're definitely crystalline. But they need shader effects on them, because right now they just sort of look like cardboard with spray paint on them. And they're very dimpled and have textures, and also there's a pretty serious, like, HDR lighting thing going on. That when I look this way, the lighting all seems pretty much okay, but then when I turn in the wrong direction, everything just becomes like a silhouette. Oh, you know what, if I focus too far off in the distance, my focal point changes with, uh, you know, frame of reference with, uh the viewpoint, and then when I look down here, yeah, everything comes back into focus. It's a little too jarring, to be honest. I could probably turn that off, though. Maybe with a command line or something. Alright, over here is kind of cool. Digging the stone walls. Sort of reminds me of a place in World of Warcraft a little bit. Um, Stranglethorn Vale area, I think. I don't remember all the names that well. It's the, uh, southern peninsula area, I think, coming off the bottom of the right continent. Can't remember which one is Kalimdor and which one is the southern... Whatever, I don't know why I'm talking about WoW. Anyway, we've got a few runes here. You know how much I like my rune exploration simulators. I think I've covered, what, two or three games about that now. Hoping to find another blue orb, maybe. Maybe another colored orb would be cool. Maybe a giant freaking sword, that would be pretty cool, too. No, there's there's not much going on with this. I don't like that I can walk through it also, that needs to definitely be fixed. Well, again, early alpha. Shadow interests me, it actually looks pretty well animated, it's very soft on the edges. And I want to say that the ground looks super detailed, but I think that just sort of comes with the territory when you're dealing in this engine. I'm not sure to what extent the developer borrowed assets, uh, you know, from the official stuff or what they created themselves. That's, that's an interesting thing to wonder about as well. Uh, and I think this is a college sort of experiment, um, you know, done by students. So I'm not going to hold anybody to anything for this. I'm not even sure they will be charging for this when it's done. Oh, I need the yellow orb. i got to find that. Alright, now I'm actually kind of interested. I, okay, there's a lot of different orbs to find. This is kind of my thing. Let's press F. I got the blue orb. I put it. Blue orb put. Alright, that's a little weird, though. I get that it's just the, the lighting is occluded in this circular area but it looks kind of unnatural. I don't think lighting occlusion works that way for colored lighting. Right? Wouldn't it radiate off of the surface, like the, the light rays would bounce, and everything would be bathed in this lovely blue? What is this? Looks like a key. The red... Okay, so I gotta get all the orbs. I'm totally cool with that idea. It feels like I'm playing DayZ over here or something. S-N-F-G? Or is that an E? Whatever. Nothing is here by accident. I'm sure that's a puzzle solution. So we've got five orbs, and in the center there are a lot of mysterious MS Paint question marks. Uh, wow. Okay, there's a lot of charts and diagrams here. Okay, so clearly this is laying out we know, you know, five orbs, five areas. Uh, things are becoming more clear to me. I am... I think I'm over here at this question mark, at the X. Kind of makes sense, since, you know, it's all around me. Um, so the blue orb would be, what, down here, this one? I think it would be that one. 
And we just gotta make our way around, I guess, and check stuff out. So we've got a few factors here. So green orb seems to be time. Yellow orb seems to be lightning. Red orb seems to be temperature. I'm guessing pink orb is gravity. And then blue orb is crystals. <laughs> or something. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It just means crystals. Alright, we've got more pictures to cycle through. I'm pretty much aware of this. Okay, this is different. Oh, I get it. I have to cycle through the freaking pictures I picked up, not pictures that are already in the projector. Never mind, I feel dumb now. Yeah. I was wondering why I couldn't get to anything else. That would be why. I gotta find them first. I thought I was just observing stuff that was inherently in that projector, not that I was bringing anything to the situation. I'm interested in this uh, mountainscape up here. I kind of want to check this out before we wrap this all up. Okay, you guys have to be somewhat intrigued, right? I know I was, I'm coming on a little harsh on this game, and I'm probably being a little overly critical. But I also can only qualify It's Only Alpha so many times before hopefully you guys just get what I'm saying. Uh, you know, take every kind of criticism with a grain of salt, because this is all still up in the air and could easily change. Oh, wow. Hedge maze? Oh, I do like me a hedge maze occasionally. Is the hedge maze on fire? Because I'm not keen on that. It's a pretty cool looking valley, except for this awful crap in the background, but that's okay. Um, I do want to check the hedge maze out, but I also want to check out the mountains more. Alright, so that's actually what I saw in that map. It wasn't where I thought it was. Alright, what do we have here? Another Alexander Hamilton Memoriam. Memorial. Okay, we gotta get up to that wizard tower. All the good stuff happens up there, clearly. I think that's where the Ice King lives. Man, we're adventuring and ooh, I can't wait. I'm a big Adventure Time fan, in case you couldn't tell. Actually, if you think about it, pretty much everything about Adventure Time is like... <laughs> The stuff I look for in Indie Impressions episodes. <laughs> so, uh, word to developers out there. If you want me to check out your game, make your game look like Adventure Time, and maybe add some cubes. Then you'll pretty much be set. So my first question to the developers is... Well, I don't know if this is a question. More of a rhetorical open question, uh... Or a comment. I am more interested than anything to know how you're going to pad this experience out, because I know that you've got the skeleton in place now of... Here's your things, go get them, come back here. Adventure, you know, that kind of thing. But, if this is only the beginning, like, how do you get more out of that? I'm wondering. I guess you could just have more elements, like, go here, get this, then go here, get that, before you can get the first thing, instead, you know, skipping the middleman. Um, will there be NPCs? Is this a lonely affair? I think this is probably going to be a lonely one. What's up with this day-night cycle? I, I'm curious about that. Snow area's looking pretty cool, I guess. Oh, looks like a snowboarding game up here. Okay, what's up with the detail right here? This is... Very, very smooth. Do we have, uh... We don't have footprints either. I'm a little sad about that. We've also got these little edges between where... I guess these are, like, texture brushes are meeting together. Or decals, I mean. So I think what you would usually do is you set these up like layers, so you would have like your your dirt layer, your permafrost layer, and your snow layer, or what have you. And then on the top, like you're painting this trail, right? And then you would go and uh, buffer, like with opacity, you would buffer the snow into the trail so they blend together nicely. Uh, basically just like using a brush and saying set opacity to 40% or something and paint over it or make a gradient or what have you. So I think that's how that works. Um, if it's like it is an Unreal anyway. So I guess that's why the snow is just blank, because they just didn't paint that all in yet. So, I am going to keep walking. It's like a pretty long way down. Oh, what's over there? Is that, uh, Avatar Land or something? I want to go check that out. It's cool that there's a bridge and everything, but it's kind of sad that it's, uh, like, enclosed on one side. I'd like to see the nice view from there. 
It always seems like when there's a bridge, it's a great opportunity to have some kind of really expansive uh, vista or something. Take it. Thank you. Ooh, that's really cool looking. I don't know what that is, though. And to the developer, I don't think you need to make the beacons on those uh, cameras so freaking bright. And maybe don't make them cameras. Make them, like, actually Polaroids or something. Because it's kind of weird taking a camera every time you get a picture. Make them memory sticks. Make them CDs or something. I mean, having them be cameras is like, who collects a whole bunch of cameras and then, what, offloads them onto this projector? I don't think that's how that works. Again, being hypercritical, this is not a big deal. I'm not really upset or anything. I'm just saying. I'm letting the thoughts fro fro flow freely from my fro. I don't have a fro. Monolithic wizard tower. What are we doing up here, man? Are we gonna meet him? I want to meet the Ice King. I hope he doesn't have Princess Bubblegum trapped up here. Dude's kind of a pervert. If you've watched the show, you know what I mean. Do I cast a shadow on this? Yes, I do. That is good. Red orb time. Alright, well, no princesses, uh, but that's okay. I would have liked to actually see light rays coming out of these windows with this red orb up here. I don't know if that's even possible, but it would have been really cool, like, if it was night... And you just see this cool, like, bright red obelisk on the distance, on the horizon, and, and just want to go towards that. Acting more like another beacon. I mean, there certainly could be a few puzzles and stuff breaking this up. That's probably what I would want to see. I feel like I'm playing Skyrim, we're so high. Time to battle a dragon and shout at him and hit him in the kneecaps or something. Why do we hate the dragons so much again? Oh yeah, because they steal all our treasure. We need all the treasure. So we can build houses and stuff. It's kind of like a wasteland over here. Is this all frozen? What is this? It's a strange texture. It's uh, somewhere between grass and snow. But it also kind of looks hard, and it's a little green. I don't know where I'm going now, I'm just sort of off the rails. Let's up with this texture, it's very blue over here. Ooh. It's pulsating, what's... Is this sun actually dynamically moving, or not? I can't really tell. Oh, there's multiple suns. <laughs> that's a nice surprise, I guess. I guess that's what that is. Unless it's a very bright moon. I don't think so, though. It's okay, we can have multiple light sources. It's fine with me. So is the ground supposed to be glowing, or is that just my brain playing tricks on me? Alright, it doesn't seem to be doing that over here. Well, everything happens for a reason, so there must be a reason for it. That looks like... pavement. Um, I would say that the... Terrain mapping is a little bit heavy-handed. These rock shapes are, are very kind of first try, like making bump map or uh, terrain maps. They look very. I don't know what the right word is. They're they're too blocky. Like there needs to be. Well, I guess you know what though. You're you're dealing with really huge level of distance. You probably can't do a lot with detail on the mountainous areas. I guess what I would do is I would make them less rounded and more uh, pointy, shard-like. And I think that would go a long way uh, to making this look a little bit more convincing, at least in my eyes. Alright, always awkward when this happens, but it happens so often where you come down off of a really freezing cold mountain and directly into what appears to be a desert. Um, topography, man, like, it doesn't work that way. I mean, whatever, it's a video game, I shouldn't be whining about that, it doesn't even matter. But I just find it a little bit confusing when you go straight from somewhere that's freezing cold to somewhere that's burning hot and desolate and devoid of water. That is if that even is what this is. It may also just be smoky here for some reason, foggy. This is a cool looking area actually, I like this. Listen to me change my tune in three and a half seconds. 
Alright, so... Okay, it is a desert. It just took a second. We're, we're at least in a transitional moment. That's good. I, I applaud you for that. See, biomes, though, they're... They're never this cut and dry. You don't just have a desert that goes, Hey, this is the desert. Here it is. And it is in the desert, not in the desert. In the desert, not in the desert. You get what I'm saying. I would love to see some critters running around this area, too. I imagine uh, you could just grab those crabs right out of crisis and throw them in. Probably be pretty well at home right here. This is a cool looking thing. What is this? Floating rocks are always nice. Again, sort of reminding me a little bit of World of Warcraft. Or this glowing grass. Oh, this looks like I could blow it up if I had bombs. Maybe it's a dam. That would be cool if we could change the desert into a non-desert. Oh, gravity? I need the purple. I don't have the purple orb. Breaking my balls. Alright, let's go up there somehow. Doesn't look like I'm going this way. I'm not sure I'm getting to this lighthouse either. I think this may just may not happen. Alright, it looks like unfortunately we ran into a bug and the thing crashed, so I guess that was a pretty good moment anyway to wrap up the episode. I think we got a pretty good look at the game, and I think this is definitely something to watch out for. Uh, I'm definitely interested now, and despite all my complaining, I actually quite enjoyed it. Uh, so again, please take all of my criticisms uh, and, you know, niggling issues with uh, with the game just uh, with a big grain of salt. Big big grain of salt. It's not a big deal. I'm really actually totally into it. Um, a lot of positives. Again, early alpha, a lot of things to work on though, but that'll probably happen, and I do look forward to seeing this further down in the development cycle. I'm definitely watching. I'm putting this on my radar, and it's one I'd like to come back to eventually and see what kind of changes are made. So that will wrap us up for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it very much, and I hope you will go and check this one out. Uh, as always, I'll be putting the download link in the description for you guys. Remember, again, if you do want to grab this one, uh, it's not just a simple download and install. There's a couple of things you got to do, but it's not a huge deal. I just want to make sure you get that, and it's a huge download as well. So uh, grab it if you want, and I encourage you to do so, though. So as always, remember to head on over to the website, www.indie-impressions.com, where you can stay up on all the new stuff that's going on on the channel. I post every night's video there, and I categorize all of them by uh, genre. You can sort them, search them, all that good stuff. We also have forums over there, so if you want to meet other cool people who are into indie games, I highly recommend you check that out. Then I've got my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash indieimpressions. And if you want to get a little bit of indie goodness in your Facebook feed every day, feel free to like that. Then I've got at Rockley Smile and at Indie Impression, my Twitters. If you want to suggest any new games or anything interesting that you might have run into, uh, at Rockley Smile is probably the easiest way to do that. Just hit me up on there. I'm happy to have a conversation about whatever's going on. And uh, that will pretty much do it. So remember to come back again tomorrow for another episode because I do these every single day. And I hope to see you back here, alright? So thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a lovely night.